He has two eyelids. He has an eyelid like ours that's just completely, if he closes it, he goes, he goes, he goes black. But he has another opaque eyelid. And you can say it's just like a, a built-in set of sun, or really dark sunglasses. And that eagle, if he sees a condor coming after him, he'll, he'll, he'll flip that set of eyelids down. He'll go right into the sun. He'll fly right into the sun. And if that condor turns after him and goes into the sun, what happens? It blinds the condor. He loses the eagle, and the eagle's gone. Amen. He loses that battle before. He wins that battle without even fighting. Amen. He wins it without even fighting. And you know that's how you know we look to the sun. Amen. As Christians, we look to the S U N. Amen. The S U N. You know, and that spirit it gives us eyes. Amen. We have eyes of the spirit. Amen. And you know, to the world, Jesus is nothing. Ain't it? It's nothing. It's blinding to them. They can't see it. When they look, when the world looks at Jesus, they don't see anything, do they? They can't understand it. It can't be discerned. Why? Because it's spiritually discerned. Amen. But as Christians, we can look to the sun. Amen. And we see salvation. We know there's a refuge in the sun. Amen. There's refuge in Jesus, ain't there? Amen. We find protection from our enemies in Jesus. Amen. But the enemy wants to take us out. Amen. And it does. And it wants to get us on the ground. And what is the ground? Like in the method, if you can say in scriptures, that's, that's like world. That's like the world. It's unbelief. It's sin. Amen. It's the place where we really don't want to be. Amen. If we can avoid it. But it says, those that wait on the Lord. Amen. They'll mount up on wings of eagles. Amen. Amen. They'll run and not grow weary. Amen. So, but, but who mounts up on wings of eagles in the scripture? Those that wait on the Lord. Amen. Those that wait on the Lord. So you could say, well, that's not necessarily an easy thing, is it? When things ain't going right, and you know you have to, you, you, when you've prayed, amen, and you've done everything that you know that the Lord has required of you, and now you know you're, you're there, you, now you just have to wait for the Lord to deliver you. That's not an easy thing sometimes, amen. is it? Amen. But how long do you have to wait, amen? How long? I mean, you know, some people wait for years for things, amen? Yeah. And so, sometimes it comes quickly, sometimes it takes a little bit longer, but how long do we have to wait? And... Back in the 80s, there was a movie called Karate Kid. Have you ever seen that movie? Mm -hmm. Karate Kid, it was this old uh, Japanese man. And this young man, he's getting picked on, beat up by these bullies. And he says, well, I'm going to teach you karate. And so what does he do? He says, he says oh, come over here and, and uh, I'll wash my car. He says, go like this and go like this. He says, now put the, waist, the wax on like this and put the wax on like this. He says, now come over here and paint my fence like this and paint it like this. Yeah, yeah. And so the little boy gets mad. He says, I thought you were going to teach me karate. All you're doing is having me do all your work. When am I going to learn karate? And Mr. Miyagi says, after. He says, after what? After, after. He says, after you learn what I'm trying to teach you now, amen. And that's just like us in the Christian world, amen. Why are we in this valley? Lord, why are we in this valley? Lord, when are you going to bring me out of this valley, amen? After, after. After you learn what it is I'm trying to teach you, amen, in the valley that you're in, amen. That's what the Lord wants of us. But, you know, once we've learned that, we, what do we do? We mount up on wings of eagle. Amen? But what does that mean? What does that mean to mount up on wings of eagle? It means that you get, when, when an eagle wants to fly, it gets itself into position to fly. Amen? So what does it do? It spreads its wings like this. And what it does, it, it, it waits for the wind. It waits for a gust of wind. It'll feel the wind. If it feels it over here, it'll turn right into the wind and it lifts its wings like this. Amen? It lifts its wings like this. It's anticipating that wind to blow, amen? And that's how it should be with us as Christians, amen? We should be anticipating the move of the Spirit, amen? Oh, and we should be waiting on that move of the Spirit, amen? Oh, and waiting, waiting for it. And we're waiting on the Lord. We're waiting for that anointing. Because what happens when the anointing comes? It breaks the yokes, amen? We can't, we're nothing without the anointing. But with the anointing, we're everything, amen? The anointing is the answer to everything. Prayers without anointing is just a waste of your breath, amen? Yeah. But prayers with anointing, amen, has power. You know, you can pray and pray and pray, but if there's no anointing behind it, it's, it's, it, you're building a house, amen, that's going to fall, amen, you are. Amen. There's another old movie that I really like. I think it came out in the 60s. It was called Midway. And it was a story of, uh, of World War II battle in the Pacific. Midway was an island. It was midway, halfway between Hawaii and California. And it was really important. And we had we had a naval battle there against Japan. And uh, in that movie, the, uh, the they spotted the, the Japanese fleet, and the admiral of that fleet says, let's get Horn and Enterprise, that's the, the two aircraft carriers, that have. and they said, let's get Horn and Enterprise turned into the wind and ready to launch. What does that mean? What does that mean? 
And this is very bearing in the scriptures here, and it'll make sense in a second. But they turn in boats so that they're that, that they're steaming into the wind. And to understand why they do that, you have to understand how a wing on an airplane works, okay? And have you ever looked at a wing on an airplane? It's flat underneath and it arcs like this. It arcs like this over top. What happens? Wind, and this is true not only of an airplane wing, but this is true of an eagle's wing or any other bird. Wind travels across here really fast because it's just short, but over here it has to travel longer. That creates a pressure difference and that creates lift on the airplane. So they put that boat so that it's going into the wind, and the stronger the wind blows, the more lift it creates. I, I took my son, or my, my grandson, I take him up there to the Benton Air Show, and they always, they always fly a plane by and he'll drop out candy. But one year we went up there and it was really, really windy. And that old man and that pilot, there was so much wind, he come around and he flew right into that wind and he got right above them kids, he cut that engine. And he just sat there and hovered like this because there was so much wind that he could just let the airplane just sit there in midair and fly and just hover there in midair. That's the lift that the, that, that the wind causes us, amen. And the spirit is the same way. What do we do? We do this, amen. We feel the anointing, we feel the spirit, and we mount up and we wait for that wind to blow yeah. and give us lift. And before we've even exerted any energy, amen, the spirit has helped to lift us up into higher places, praise amen. <laughs> we mount up on wings of eagles, amen, and we fly into higher places. Amen. Now, you know, it is just like that. It's just like that in the spirit with us. Amen. We wait for that spirit. Amen. But, you know, eagles, eagles are like any other bird. Most birds, you know, they're, the innate, an animal in general, if it feels a storm coming, like this hurricane is coming up, what are animals going to do? They're going to seek shelter, ain't they? But you know, there's a lot of eagles in Florida, and I guarantee you, them eagles are not going to seek shelter in that storm. What do they do? They do. The eagles do something that seems kind of absurd and crazy, but no other really bird ever does it. What an eagle does. That eagle senses that storm fly coming, and he'll fly right into that storm, right into it. Why does an eagle do that? He mean because he knows that in them storms you get these these updrafts of wind go up and up and they're, they're, they're warm air and it comes up and comes up and he has the ability to lock his wings he can just lock his wings and glide like a glider but he'll hit them hot thermals and he'll glide up 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 he'll go up farther than he could ever have the strength to fly with on his own amen and that's just like us in the spirit amen when, when the storms come into our life we have two choices we can be like a weasel and dig a hole in the ground and hide oh help lord i don't know if i can get through the storm amen or we can be like that eagle, amen. He can smell that storm coming, amen. He can smell it. And he'll go and he'll, he'll go right into that storm. And so how, what does that mean to us as Christians, amen? That means that, Lord, I'm going through this battle, and I'm going to praise you through this battle. Why? Because I know I'm going to learn through this battle. I'm going to grow through this battle, and something good is going to come out of this battle, even though I can't see it, amen. Amen. They, he, he, they, we mount up on as we, on wings. We wait for the Lord. Yeah. We wait for that wind to blow. We wait for the anointing to come to us. And when it does, we turn into that wind and we mount up and we fly to higher heights. Amen. Yeah. And we do it almost effortlessly. And we allow the word. We, we allow the Spirit to do that work on our life. Amen. Instead of having to toil on our own. Amen. We, we let the Spirit do the work. Amen. Is a good way to look at that. Spirit do the work. Amen. That's right. So what are we? Are, are we black-headed eagles or are we white-headed eagles? Amen. You know, the last time we was in the storm, did you what, did you relish going into the storm? Or was, was you, oh, Lord, help me, help me, help me. Amen. Do you have a thankful heart that you're in the storm? Or are you just hoping that you can get through it? Amen. You know, a, a black-faced eagle, he'll, 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 he'll cower in a corner and hope that that storm will pass over and that they're going to make it, okay? I don't know if I'm going to make it out of this one, brother. Have you ever heard someone saying that? You're going to be fine. Amen. The Lord has you has everything in control. And you, you might not understand it. You might not realize it. But the Lord is in control. And the Lord don't let anything happen in our life that we can't handle, that he hasn't allowed, does he? Amen. But a white-faced eagle, he'll say, here it comes, boys. Amen. Let's get it turned into the wind and let's go. Amen. They relish it. And they're going to soar to heights. Amen. They soar to new heights. They have a thankful heart in the valley, amen, and that's what we should be, amen, instead of hiding out in the storm. 
So, you know, there, in our area, we have many birds of prey. And I don't know why I have a fascination with birds of prey, but I really like birds of prey. I like watching them, observing them. I like, I, I'm, I'm an observer of nature to begin with at heart. You know, there's three or four kind of hawks. There's several different kinds of owls. There's peregrine falcons. And there's even eagles in here. If you look around, there is eagles in this area. Amen. But, and, and you know, it's fascinating what they eat. They'll, they'll eat. Anything that they can catch, they'll eat. You know, an eagle, an eagle will eat a mountain goat. It'll eat a deer if it has the right opportunity to get a hold of it. I've seen films where eagles have flown down on a mountainside and grabbed a 150-pound mountain goat. It, and they don't have to fly. All it has to go is five, six feet out and then drop it. And it'll fall 1,000 feet to its death. And then it just dives down and gets it. So they're very, you know, they have that eye and they have that ability, amen, to see what they need, amen, in the spirit realm. We should be that way. We should be able to see what we need and that the spirit will allow us to see what it is that we need, amen, far high above, amen, above everybody else. But, you know, I see a lot in our area, I see a lot of birds of prey with snakes. And once again, eagles have a unique adaption to snakes. And what they do, you know, it depends on it depends on the kind of eagle. A gold eagle, he can dive at over 200 miles an hour on a regular basis. And a, a, a bald eagle, he's about 150 to 175 mile an hour when they dive down after a prey. But they'll spot a, a snake and they'll dive down after that snake, and they have about two inch talons, so they're they're about that. They're talons, and they'll they'll pin that snake behind the head, and in just in one swoop. They'll take their top, their, their 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 beats, and they'll smack that head right off. Just cut it, whack it right off, and the head goes rolling. And then they then they they fly off with the rest of the snake to eat somewhere safe. Why? Because they don't want to be on the ground, amen. Because they know they're in danger on the ground. That's when they can be harmed. But they 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 reach down, they they pin that snake, they hack its head off, and they take off with it, amen. But you know, maybe an immature eagle, they 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 have an innate understanding that's a snake and it could be poisonous, and so they're they're not as likely. Amen. To, to go after that snake, or if they do, they're more likely to make a snake. They just like we as Christians could do. But they, they take that, and you know, and a white-headed snake will see that. You know, a Christian or a white-headed eagle. I mean, they're going to see that snake on the ground, ain't they? I mean, they're going to see it. They're going to see it coming. So when the enemy comes to a mature Christian, they're going to say, Ah, I see you, devil. I see your attack. I see exactly what you're doing. You know, you're just the same old Snickers bar in a different wrapper, ain't <laughs> And you've been doing this for 40 years to me, and you ain't done nothing different. You just changed your wrapper. Get out of here. Amen. And they rebuke that in Jesus' name. But, but an immature ego might not see it as much. Amen. And so they might suffer some loss from that. But, you know, sometimes as a young Christian, you know, sometimes it's okay just to say, I'm not going to face that battle. Amen. Like the eagle does sometimes. It just flies into the sun. I'm not going to, I'm not going to battle that demon right now. I'm just going to, I'm just going to, I'm going to grow and learn and mature. But how many know that whatever demon we face in our life, at some point it's going to come back, it's going to come back, and ultimately we're going to have to face that demon, ain't we? Yeah. Ultimately. Amen? And, and you, you know, we, that's, that's just how it is. And that mature eagle, amen, he knows when to fight and he knows when to run. Amen? He knows when to run to the sun, Jesus, but he knows when to make that attack. But, you know, the, the eagle don't sit on the ground and wait for the, the snake to attack him, does he? Amen? He, he sees that snake coming, and he takes the battle to the snake, amen. Mm -hmm. don't, don't ever doubt for a minute that that snake doesn't fear that eagle. He does, amen. And believe me, church, amen, if, 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 if there's anointing flowing in you, yeah. then devils fear you, amen. They fear amen. you more than you realize they do. Why? Because they fear that anointing, and they know what that anointing can do to them. You know, what's that scripture says? The whole, I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions. Mm -hmm. Nothing of the enemy shall by any means harm you. Amen? Mm -hmm. yeah. So how do we know if we're white or black face? You know, eagles. Did we fly into our last storm? Amen? Did we praise God, thanking the Lord? I'm going through, I'm coming out a little closer. A little bit more refined in the fire, as you could say, amen? Or am I burning some garbage or some drought out of my life? Or am I just like Israel in the wilderness? Remember what did Israel in the wilderness do? They were always moaning and groaning and complaining, amen. I want onions. I want garlic. I want cucumbers. I want meat. So what did God say? Have a hundred billion quail and choke on them. <laughs> Basically, that's what God told them, amen. 
That's basically what the Lord told Israel. You know, there was, there was unbelief, wasn't there? There was unbelief, amen? Yeah. But God is our strength. He's our deliverer, amen? He's our high tower, the scripture says, that we run into in our time of need, amen? We, we, we fly into the sun when we're in trouble because the sun will deliver us, amen? Thank you, Jesus. Eagles soar with eagles. Did you know that? Oftentimes, they, now you don't see it around here very much because the eagles are here, but they're very sports. But you get somewhere where there's a lot of eagles, what do the eagles tend to do? They congregate in big, large groups of them. You'll see 20, 30, 40, 50, sometimes more eagles together. In a, and particularly if it's a certain time, like if there's a salmon run or something where they know there's a big source of food, they will congregate together in big, huge masses, amen? But anointed people associate with anointed people, amen? They do. And why, why do they do that? The scripture says in Proverbs, iron sharpens iron, amen? So does one man sharpen another. And we know that another scripture says that associating with, associating with anointed people, that brings anointing in our life, amen. And I figured out a long time ago, I, I try to find people that are more anointed than me, and, I, and I, I, I try to stick with them as much as they'll tolerate me, amen. Because I know that that anointing will rub off on me. That, that, that wisdom and that understanding that God has given them, if I just stick with it, amen, I'll learn it too, amen. It'll come in my life, you know. Anointed pe association with anointed people brings anointing, and eagles tend to stick together. You know, they soar with like-minded people, is what you could say. Amen. Eagles, and we, as Christians, we soar with like-minded people. Amen. So, you know, when, when there's, when you have this eagle, and he's sitting there with his wings spread. He's waiting for the wind, and he's waiting. When we're, we're, we're that eagle, we're, we're waiting. We're waiting for the Lord. And, we're, and, and that that spirit, we say that spirit does the work for us, don't it? And when we feel that lift, it gives us lift, and we take flight. But you know, white-faced eagles they mount up on their wings. But what does that look like? You know, the scriptures give us an interesting example. Of what what exactly this looks like? It's really amazing. In Ezekiel, the first chapter. Ezekiel, the first chapter. In the first, the fourth verse, it says, now this is in heaven, okay? It says, I look and behold, a whirlwind came out of the north, a great cloud and a fire enfolding itself, and a brightness was about it, and out of the mist thereof, as the color of amber, out of the mist of the fire. Also out of the mist thereof came the likeness of four living creatures, and this was their appearance. They had the likeness of a man, and every one had four faces. Every one had four wings. And their feet were straight feet, and the soles of their feet were like the sole of a, a calf's foot. And they sparkled like the color of burnished brass. And there, they had their hands of man under each wing on their four sides. And their four had their faces and their wings. Their wings were joined one to another. They turned not when they went. They went every one straight forward. As for the likeness of their faces, they found their, the four had the face of a man, the face of a lion on the right side, and on the four had a face of an ox on the left side. The four also had the face of an eagle. Thus were their faces, and their wings were stretched upward. Two wings of every one were joined one to another, and two covered their bodies. And they went everywhere straight forward. Whether the spirit was to go, they went, and they turned not when they went. Okay, that's there's a lot in that there, and that's that, this is uh, talking about chair of angels, amen, chair of angels in heaven. And it said that they have four four sets of wings, amen, and. Uh, they have they had wings on their hands, but they had wings that, that cover their body, and they had wings that cover their hand. And what do they do? They spread like this. They spread their wings like this. Well, on them wings was hands and arms, and they stood together four. So their wingtips touched each other. Amen. What what are they doing? They're communally worshiping the Lord. Amen. They're lifting holy hands and wings. Amen. Holy hands and wings under the Lord, and they're worshiping the Lord like that, and that's just like that eagle does. Amen. He lifts, his, he lifts himself like that. Amen. But they, they said that you know they're covering cherubs. And they, it says that the scripture that, that the, the cherub it covers the glory. So the wings and the hands they're covering the glory of the Lord round about. Amen. And it says they continually worship the Lord nonstop. Amen. They have faces of a man, uh, faces of a lion, faces of an ox and faces of an eagle. Amen? And it says when we mount up on eagles, amen, we're, we're being taken that way into the spirit, that's what we look like. Amen? We have we have holy hands raised. Amen? We have we have a man's, uh, we have the face of a man. We have wings of an eagle. 
Amen. We have the spirit of Christ, which is what? The Lion of Judah. And we have the strength of an ox by the spirit. Amen. So mature white eagles are worshipers, ain't they? They are. Amen. And mature Christians are worshipers. Amen. They mount up. They raise holy hands. They're proclaiming God. I'm coming through this storm. Amen. And I'm going to worship you all the way. How I many you know that a storm, if you can worship the Lord through a storm, it's a lot easier. Amen. Amen. And, and, and I've learned, I've learned uh, as, as I'm longer I've been a Christian, the more that I'm willing to just yield to that storm and worship the Lord, the quicker I'm out of the storm. <laughs> the quicker it goes. Why? Because I'm, hopefully I'm learning whatever the lesson I'm supposed to be learning. I don't want to spend my whole lifetime learning, learning, learning one lesson. Have you ever spent years learning a lesson? And the Lord just keeps bringing it to you and bringing it to you because you can't seem to get through your thick skull. I have. <laughs> I've spent years trying to learn the same lesson over and over and over. And I was too stubborn and hard hearted to figure it out. Amen. I don't want to do that no more. Amen. I don't want to do that. Amen. I want to, I want to be sensitive to the spirit. Amen. And know and learn and move on. Amen. Because I, because I know there's higher heights that I can go to. Ain't there? You know, but on the ground is weasels. And I, I, that I know of nowhere in the scripture says, Weasels are in heaven, amen. amen. There's eagles in heaven, but there ain't no weasels, amen. I don't want to walk on the ground in the world and sin, amen, and doubt and unbelief with the weasels, amen. I want to I want to soar in high places with the eagles, amen. We mount up on wings of eagles when we wait for that spirit to move, amen. He gives us soar, a slip. We soar into the heavens, amen. We soar above the weasels and we soar above the snakes, don't we? Amen. We soar into the sun. Amen. Where even the condors can't get us. Amen. When we soar into the sun. Amen. Christ is our high tower that we run into in our time of need. Amen. Our refuge. That's my message tonight. Amen. I hope you was encouraged. That was a good message. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Mount up on wings of eagles. Mature eagles. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. That's right. All I want to do is pray for the Lord. Amen. He wants us to. That's right. Absolutely. He inhabits our praises. Yeah. It's, Amen. It's a, you know, you just want to. You want to praise Him. That's right. You want love Him so much. You just love Him. Yeah. Yep. And it makes it so much, you know, maybe you understand it a little better. Yeah. So it's really good. Life is easier when you're, and better when you praise the Lord, ain't it? Yes. Amen. 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 Pray and pray, prayer and praise and, and belief, you know. Well, someone that uh, came here before, she sang, it was Brenda. Uh, she came here a few times and, and sang and prayed to the Lord. She told me, she said, you're like a spiritual cheerleader to the Lord. She said, you're always praising the Lord, shouting mm -hmm. and clapping your hands. And just. And I never thought of it that way, but it blessed me for her to say that. Amen. Amen. In her eyes, I, you know, I just want to love on the Lord. That's all I want to do, and I just praise him and thank you. Some people are hard, are not as wired to praise yeah. in worship. They don't. Some some people it comes natural. You know what's that scripture says? Much forgiven, much loved. So generally, the more the, the more garbage that you had that the Lord cleansed you and forgiven you of, the more you love and the more you're a worshiper. Amen. I guess so. That's but <laughs> some people some people are just not. It just goes against their nature. Yeah. You know, some, some, you know, sometimes it's sin, sometimes it's rebellion, sometimes it's just that's not they're they're not. I call them feelers, amen. Feelers and spiritual feelers. They're not spiritual feelers, amen. That's not their calling. That's not their gifting. But you know, to some level or another. But we all should be worshippers, shouldn't we? Amen. All should be worshippers. Amen. Worshiping, and, praising, yeah. Holding hands. And I've learned sometimes to be careful not to judge people on on the way that they worship because it might not mean nothing to you. But they're not worshiping me, amen. They're worshiping the Lord. And all that matters is if the Lord accepts their worship, amen. If the Lord is pleased with their worship, regardless of how we see it, you know, that that's he, that's their, they're, they're the Lord's servant, not my servant, amen. Amen. And I'm not their judge, the Lord is their judge. And vice versa, amen. Because Because we see things that, you know, people go to church, I'm like, that's just not, that church isn't for me. And I really don't understand it. But, you know, if, if the fruits of the Spirit are there, amen, amen. So, you know, if the Spirit is there and, and, and Jesus is preached, the gospel is preached, that's what's important, amen. 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 So, you know, you could say, well, the Pentecostal way is the best way. Well, you know, 
if, if someone can bear more fruit than you, then you really can't say that to them, can you? <laughs> and you know, there, there, there's blessed saints in a lot of churches, ain't there? Amen. Sure, there's whole churches that are apostate, but amen, there's a lot of churches. Well, I got, I got a testimony. Amen, a brother that I know, and he's one of the few apostles, true, what I consider a true apostle. You know, apostles are, are, are rare. A true apostle is very rare. You know, a lot of Christians will never meet a true apostle. But I think he's got five churches that he started right now. But his fourth church is in uh, Parkersburg, West Virginia. And uh, they just broke ground on it. They have a, a, a pretty large church. I'd say there's maybe 100, 150 people. And they have a, a really large school there. But uh, I was listening to him you know, on, on the YouTube. And he said, we just broke ground on a new school building. We have 119 kids on the waiting list to get into the school. Wow, <laughs> Amen. Awesome. Praise the Lord. Amen. So I don't know how many kids he's got. He's probably got 100, 200 kids in that school already. And they're breaking ground because they've got 119 people wanting to get in. Amen. So the Lord is moving. Amen. Sometimes we don't see it. Amen. But the Lord is moving. Amen. The yes, Lord is moving you. still on the earth. The, the Holy Ghost is not dead, is it? Amen. And the parents want them to go. And they'll pay to get them in there. Well, yeah. Amen. Do you blame them? No. Not at all. Nothing against any public school teacher if, they're, if, that's, if that's how you make your living. But, well, I'm glad I don't have no more kids. <laughs> <laughs> you know, no way would I send a kid to a public school no more. Uh-uh. No way. And you know, and the, how does change come? It comes by the, the by the small people, amen. The everyday people. That's how we can make changes. And if the, if enough common people <coughs> break the back of the school, then things will change, won't it? Amen. If enough people pull the kids out of the public school, they won't get the funding. <coughs> so something's going to have to change that way. So that's a blessed thing, I think, amen. Amen. But it's, you know, it's just to me. I was thrilled to see that the Lord is still moving. You know. Starting a church is not an easy thing, and uh, you. What, here's the here's the thing that I've learned about an apostle, and this is kind of you might find it kind of fascinating. You can't fake an apostle. You know what? You cannot go out and start a church, and then and turn it over to someone, then go start another church, and turn it over to someone, go and start another church. Listen, you're going to bear the fruit of an apostle, or you're not going to bear the fruit of the apostle. Amen. And if you're an apostle. You're going to bear that fruit, amen, and it's going to be evident to everybody, amen. You can't, you can't, you might be able to be a, a prophet liar to, to some churches, amen, and, and prophesy lies and get away with it to some degree, you know, but you're not, you're not going to, you're not going to fake being a true apostle, amen, because you can't, you can't do it, amen. You can't fake that church being, being, being constructed. You can't, you can't just pack up everything, you pack your family and go into a strange town and then just advertise on the radio that you're starting a church. And then a year later, have 100 people pass it over to a, to a pastor and then go off into another town and do the same thing over and over again. That has to be divinely inspired by the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. So that's it's one of the reasons it's, it's almost impossible to fake that anointing of, a, of an apostle. 